We just made these two holiday centerpieces, fall and winter, and we did it with this little tiny Fisker saw, a hot glue gun, and our Cricut. And we'll show you how we did it right now. What is up? A welcome back. Do you like to do a builder to make it? So do we. And we have a new video each week. This week, we're taking it to the tabletop. Yes, we're getting ready for the holidays. Last year, we had like a little intimate intimate thanksgiving it was just the kids but this year we're back to the whole big crew extended family that means multiple tables all throughout the downstairs of the house yes we have a very large family and i'm the one that hosts thanksgiving and so there's a giant table of like eight people in the kitchen we have one in the family room and one on the pool well, table yeah now that we have our pool table converted into a table there's going to be one in there too so yeah, so and we feeding need an army. We need it. There was people eating on the porch the year before last. So yes. We ran out of seats. So for this week's video, we're starting to, this is our first kind of prep for the holidays and we're going to make a centerpiece for our table. We're going to make a Thanksgiving version and we're going to make a Christmas version. And we're going to show you two ways to make them. Garrett thinks he's making the easy version. I am making the easy version. And I'm, and I'm making the version that I think is harder. Would, <laughs> would be your typical way you make a box. So we will see. We will see. Step one, we're gonna gather all of our supplies. I just needed three packs of stir sticks. Oh, and some stain. I'm using this uh, unicorn spit. And for a tool, he's gonna use this cute little Fiskars saw blade that I found. It's like a little tiny trim saw. Look at this little thing before I cut myself. Isn't that yeah. so cute? I told him this would be perfect. I actually went and got this because I had seen it in the store. I went and got this for this project because I think it'd be perfect. I didn't know it had a sheath. Ooh. Careful. Ooh, look at that. Oh no. <laughs> I didn't know it came uh, with a little thing here. <laughs> All right, back to what we're doing. Please don't hurt me or you. For my project, I'm going to do it, I don't know, what I think is the typical way you would build a crate. We're gonna make tiny little crates. I did look for them in the store and I didn't see them because otherwise we could have just stained and painted them. But we're gonna make our own crates because they need to be tabletop size. And I'll tell you, this is probably one of the smallest projects we've ever done. We never do a small project. And these are gonna be eight by eight. So they're gonna be tiny for us. And I'm using what I found in the trim section. It's called lattice. So what do you say? This is a quarter of an inch by an inch and a half. Yeah, because these are an inch and a half, and they're about the same. And then these are pre-primed, so I'm planning to paint mine, so that's perfect. I love that they were pre-primed. And then we're gonna use these 5 8 five eighths inch square dowels, and these are gonna be the corners, and this is what the lattice is gonna attach to to make our little box. You're gonna cut through all of that with this jam right here? I mean, you're right. I think so. All right. Um, I definitely know I can cut through the lattice with that. I'm a, I may be questioning a little bit as to whether or not I can cut through. A little elbow grease. But if you want to make it at home and you don't have your own pocket saw, I think this would be a great alternative. So that's what I'm trying. And you can wear this one on your belt. You don't have to put it in your pocket. Don't worry, pocket. We know you're still here. <laughs> Show another alternative. And then I'm gonna paint mine with some country chic paints. So I'm gonna be using vanilla frosting. And honestly, I haven't decided on which color orange I'm gonna use. It's either gonna be the sparklers or with a twist. Two different oranges. These are more like that fall orange. And then of course they have their new leather bound brown, which is perfect. And then I might add this green in. Which You're going is, in with a lot of colors. I don't know. I mean, that is a lot of, this is just a, Tiny crate, Kim. Yeah, but it's gonna be colorful <laughs> and it's really gonna decorate my table. And then this one's called Secret Garden. It's great green. And then I may even throw in this road trip, <laughs> which knows? is a sandy color. Who knows? You might even find a few more paints along the way. <laughs> I might, I might. <laughs> and then what are you gonna to use to assemble oh, yours? I'm hot gluing my whole thing. He's trying to go no tools, no... No real tools. No big tools, no, no big industrial tools. tools. Yeah, no industrial tools. Yeah, still still need your little Fisker saw. Yeah, I need my sword. And I think, I think I'm gonna be using Brad. Oh, you think so? I think I'm gonna nail the things. Oh, you think I should hot glue them too? I don't know, we'll do them two we'll different see. ways. We'll see, see how we're feeling when we get there. Ooh. <laughs> 
Step two, we're gonna make all of our cuts. I'm just gonna cut my stir sticks down to eight inches and uh, they already have a ruler on them, so I don't even have to measure anything. Yeah, these came from the paint department. They are, they look like great little hobby sticks. I think you could yeah. use them for all kinds of things. We're They're gonna, like a buck fifty. You can stain them, you can paint them, and then yeah. like you said, they've already got a ruler on them up to, what did we say? 14 inches. 14 inches? But it goes up to like 16 or something. That's why I got them. I think it's like 16 inches to the curve. That's right. These are going to be boxes, so they're going to be 16 inch wide slats and then, I mean, eight. eight inch wide slats and then eight inches tall. We'll cut our dowels at eight inches as well. No, I'm not. I'm just gluing mine. Well, you're going to have to cut the dowel down. Mm, will we? Will we? Yes. I'm going to make all of my cuts with my new sword. <laughs> this Fiskars thing. And I'm going to use a straight edge this speed square. I'm gonna protect my table with a picket and some clamps. Clamps. Way, clamps. I got the clamps. I <laughs> got the clamps. <laughs> I got bad clamps. <laughs> you embarrassed me. <laughs> I don't know how you don't get embarrassed. <laughs> Here, you're gonna open them. You can't go through. Yeah, I am. No, you're not. Uh huh. No, I sure not. am. Yeah, I'm cutting right on through. Why not? They're all already He stacked. hasn't even taken them out of the plastic wrapping. I'm sure not. Okay. I'm just leaving them right in there. I think that's a good idea. Lining it up with the eight. We're gonna trim down this dowel to make six inch tall little pieces for the corners. And then for the bottom, we're going to make two little six and a half inch pieces for cross braces. Hold the bottom on. Right. We want this to be three pickets tall because that's the sayings I have written out right now, which yeah. would make it about six inches tall. You got pickets on the brain. I thought it was going to be eight inches, but I... <laughs> Oh, hey, I almost caught that's it back good. under there. <laughs> oh, God, that's how it hurt. Ouch. Wow, that hurts. All right, well, don't yeah, play no around. Let's back right. to what we're doing. Back to our focus. Focus. Almost lost the tooth. <laughs> Step three. Now we're going to bring it all together with hot glue only. No. No? I still think I'm gonna, well, we'll see, we'll see. I, I mean, if you wanted to try to carry apples in it, then I think maybe we need some brad nails. Well, but if it's just gonna hold some foliage, I think we'll be okay with old Sticky Jones. Well, okay. But what if I put it in the attic and then it's gonna get hot? Then it's gonna get hot over the summer and mess with the glue. I think you need, you you think need so? a little brad. All right, we can give yours a little. Sticking, we'll s <laughs> sticking. I guess. I mean, I'm just gonna try hot glue. You're gonna do like a staple. And we will see. You think so? All right, we'll figure this. We'll just come in with a teeny tiny little bread. Look, now you got us waiting on you to unwrap yours because you refused to do yeah, it. Yeah, but earlier. each one is like a tiny little present. It's like, <gasps> what's in this one? <gasps> a ruler. I got three rulers. They all stop at eight inches. For mine, I'm gonna go ahead and paint my slats first. So I'm gonna paint my top slats, 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 <laughs> orange, and then I'm gonna use antique white, and then I'm going to use leather bound. On your slats. Slats, slats, slats. slats. Get it out, Kim. <laughs> Step four. And now I'm staining. Kim's painting. She's all out of order. Well, I think it'll be difficult to paint after, so. I'll find out. Yeah, we, will, just we will see. I'm gonna use this unicorn spit. White and, I don't know, red. It's like red glitter. But first, I'm gonna get it wet. So I got a little cup of water. Splish, splash. 
get it all wet. Step three uh, for Kim. We're gonna assemble it again. We're gonna use some hot glue and then throw a little three quarter inch bread in there. The nail, not the guy. All right, my assembly is going to be just like his other than I'm adding the little Brands. nail. Yeah, the little Get bread it. nail. Brand. All right, let's see. Cute. I like the colors. I'm with you. Does it look like a flag? No, oh, it does look like a flag. <laughs> but I don't want it to look like a flag. I but think once you get the decorations on it, it'll yes. start looking like a flag. Yes. Go ahead and tell them what the next step is, and then I'll tell them what we're going to do. Step five. And now we're going to add the design. We're really just throwing a little word or a little saying on each one of these little planks. Each one of these little slats. Yeah, these are cute like they are, but they're going to be even cuter with some holiday sayings on each one. And we forgot to even mention our star of the show this week is going to be our cricket. We're going to use it to stencil. Well, I'm going to stencil. Are you going to stencil or vinyl? I don't know. I think I'm going to stencil. He loves that. We're going to stencil these cute little holiday sayings on each one. We're just going to hop into design space type out all of our sayings, all like, how many? Like 24 sayings, 24 words. We're gonna use a Cricut Maker 3 to cut these. Garrett used his fonts from his laptop that I do not have on my iPad. So the great thing about Cricut Design Space is I can just open the project and make it and I don't have to have these fonts installed on my uh, iPad. As long as I don't edit the file, it'll cut the project as is. And the great thing about this Cricut Maker 3 is we get to use this smart vinyl so I don't have to add a mat. I just load it right in here, get it under its little guides, and then I'll just go right into the to design space, click make it. I'm gonna use without a mat and then continue. So I'll select smart vinyl permanent. And with the Cricut Maker 3, I'm gonna hit the flashing triangle button. All right, I decided that I'm just gonna go with vinyl. I'm not gonna paint <laughs> or anything. <laughs> So I'm going to reverse weed mine. I'm going to put my transfer tape on, pull it off, and then just take the pieces that I'm not going to use off. Seems and hard. I don't think so. Okay. I think it's going to be easier than that weeding, transfer tape, putting it down, Mod Podge paint. That's a lot. Okay. Okay. <laughs> And for mine, we put these nice boxes around each of the words so I can go ahead and take off the first layer and just leave the boxes and then weed the little boxes. You'll see what I'm talking about. All right, I missed mistletoe up. Oh, oh, I messed up jingle bells. Oh, oh no! Oh, I got the G stuck to my thumb now. All right, I have ruined three of them now. You know what? I'm just gonna write write it on with my hand. I'm just writing them on now. I don't Kim. think you are. Yeah, I can't. Look, I ruined three, three vinyl things now. All right, I'm gonna try again. One more try. I'm gonna try a little different technique this time. I'm gonna pull all of the stuff I don't want off now, then use a piece to transfer it. I think that's a good idea. Yeah. And I have all of my stencils on. My next step is to add a coat of Mod Podge, Mod Podge, over each of these stencils, let it dry so it seals the stencil and I don't have any bleeding when I add paint. 
Or if you don't have Mod Podge, you can use the same coat of paint. So I could put a coat of orange, a coat of antique white, and a coat of green, but that takes too long. So we're gonna use mm -hmm. Mod Podge. And I'm not gonna let my paint dry before I take the stencil off. I'm gonna go ahead and peel the stencil up. Goodness, look at that already. Look, it's so cute. Now, do as I say, not as I do. We probably <laughs> should have sprayed this because of the chalk paint, and I'm using permanent vinyl because I didn't have a removable vinyl. You probably, I probably should have sprayed this with some uh, polycrylic first and then stenciled, and that way it wouldn't have pulled up some of the paint. So as I pull the stencil off, it's pulling up some of my base paint here for my pickets. But that's okay because what I think I'm going to do is give it a little sand and then a little bit of antiquing wax um, to age it a little bit. So it should be all right. <laughs> I was gonna put this big ball in mine and then kind of stuff stuff around it until it looks Christmassy. I didn't have two greenery balls, so he's confident he can use that foam ball. Yeah, yeah, it'll work. It'll work. What do you guys think? What do you think? How did it turn out? Not too shabby, right? I love them. I think they look great. I'm not sure which one I like better. Although I do think mine was easier once I figured out the correct way to weed it. Well, I think I would love to see if you guys do this project, what yours looks like. Garrett could have added some green in there for Christmas. Ah, oh, that's what the greenery was for. <laughs> oh, I see, I yeah. see, I see. <laughs> my, my box, sheer Christmas, pop of green. Well, I do think it's going to be fine with just glue. He just used glue for his. I did add some nails and glue for mine. So we can toss yours around. Yeah. We can actually drop yours off of the back of the truck. We, we could. Yeah. <laughs> but I love them. They're so cute. This is exactly, so I saw this in, idea on Pinterest. I actually went to the store that, that was going to carry these. But they were no, they weren't there. It was said 404, not found, so they don't carry this item anymore. So I was able to make it myself. I actually, I think these turned out better. I do. I think that one looks way cooler than one, than the one you saw on Pinterest. Yeah. Thanks. I do. And this one didn't exist. This one was. Yep. We just all decided to do a Christmas straight out of your hands. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we are about out of time. So if you're not gonna join us for the patron after show, we will see you next week where we'll do it, build it, and make it again. I've already balanced this one several times. This one is a no challenge. No challenge, let's try yours. Well, all right. My flowers aren't all jabbed in to the green thing, right. so. They will just assume it balances in a similar fashion. Yes. Let's just assume that and be done with it.